Have you ever gotten advice from a player to just block on wake up while you get mixed oblivion? And as your reversals get safe jumped, you think to yourself, how does anyone deal with this? And believe it or not, as sarcastic as that advice may sound, in certain situations, blocking is the safest and best option. But how is one supposed to block these kind of mix-ups consistently? In this video, I'll talk about a technique called fuzzy blocking or fuzzy defense, which will greatly help in dealing with these mix-ups. I'll be going over examples in Guilty Gear, Undernight, and Tekken, but I want you to know that this method can be used in any games with higher low mix-ups. So even if your game isn't represented in this video, this concept will still apply. Fuzzy blocking is a technique that I personally describe as a defensive option select. For those of you who do not know what an option select is, it is a set of inputs that will do different actions based on the situation. We made a dedicated video on this, so if you would like more details on it, click the link in the cards and details. Now to illustrate what I mean, we'll use a very basic high or low mix-up from Guilty Gear Strive. Here, we'll have Eno get a knockdown from a crouching dust, then dash up for an aerial kick, or land without doing anything and go for a low hitting crouching kick. As a side note, doing a low attack without any aerial attacks hitting is called an empty low. The special thing about this mix-up is that the aerial attack hits faster than the empty low attack. This is because the aerial attack is done in the air, while the empty low requires Eno to land first before doing the attack. So why is this important? If these attacks do not hit at the same time, it is not a true 50-50 high-low mix-up. The defender can block against whatever that comes first, then immediately shift to block the second option. So in this case, the defender can block high for a certain period of time, then block low. To show you how this works, we'll set up the training dummy to do exactly that after waking up. As you can see, the defender is doing the same inputs but blocking both options. Now for the Eno player, to get around fuzzy blocking, the player will need to change their approach to counter this technique. Timing for the attacks can be changed, different strings can be used, or entirely different approaches such as landing throw may become more viable. However, a lot of these approaches require more risk as a lot of them can be interrupted. And this is why being able to block the basic mix-up is so incredibly valuable. For our second example, I'll use Nanase from Undernight in Birth. Nanase has two dash attacks, dash B and dash C. Dash B hits low and dash C hits high. <laughs> the problem with this attack is that the startup looks very similar to each other and is very difficult to discern in the heat of battle. I mean, look at this. Look at it. Who thought this was a good idea? Anyhow, despite my personal gripes, the developers did one thing right about this set of moves. Dash B and Dash C have different startup timing and can be fuzzy blocked. Dash B starts up in 18 frames and Dash C starts up in 27. So the defender after recognizing the startup of the dash attack can block low for a few frames then block high to cover both options. For this example, we'll have the training dummy's fuzzy blocking triggered by Nanas' jump. <laughs> 
As you can see, as long as you react to the initial startup of the dash attack, you can block both options without visually confirming which one it is. For our last game, we'll use Tekken 7. Tekken has a lot of strings, and within those strings, a lot of variations, many of them with branching paths that contain mix-ups. For example, Law's Junkyard Kick's third hit can end in a mid or low. And if you haven't already guessed from the pattern in this video, the low ender is slower than the mid follow-up. Therefore, the defender can fuzzy block high then low to defend against both options. The great thing about defending this is that blocking the mid gives you a significant advantage while blocking the low grants you a heavy punish. If we were to take things one step further, instead of fuzzy blocking low, we can incorporate parries instead. Josie's 1-2 high kick to switch stance leads to a set of moves that include high, mid, and low attacks that can all be fuzzy blocked. The problem with blocking the low attack is that the move is not negative enough to do a significant punish. However, by replacing down back block with a down forward parry, the defender can still block the non-low follow-ups while parrying the low for significant damage. Hopefully this video showed you how potent fuzzy blocking is. If you use this technique in conjunction with the ideas from our power of blocking video, I can assure you that your defense will level up significantly. It certainly has made me a much better player. And before I end this video, I want you to know that we make various fighting game content so comment with that like, subscribe, and notification button if you found this helpful. And if you can, please share this with one or two of your friends. Also, be sure to check out our Patreon for cool perks. If we get enough patrons, I'm thinking of doing extras like commentary and behind the scene videos. Alright, till next time, have fun with fighting games.